Look, we, we've all got our quarantine projects. Fractal's got theirs. They're on a tear. The Meshify 2 Compact? Wait, have, haven't I seen this case before? Meshify? Meshify 2? Meshify 2 Compact? Well, yes and no. Let's dive in. While I unpack this, let's talk about the specs of this thing. This is the Meshify 2 Compact. The first thing, the thing that's top of mind for me, is the graphics card compatibility. 341 millimeters with a front fan, 360 millimeters without a front fan. CPU cooler compatibility, towers up to 169 millimeters tall. In terms of water cooling, you can have up to 360 millimeters or 280 millimeters. Uh, in the front, up to 240 millimeters in the top, a rear 120, and a bottom 120, but you have to remove the hard drive cage for that. You can fit three 120 or two 140 millimeter fans up front, two 120s or 140 millimeter fans in the top, a 120 millimeter fan in the rear, and a 120 millimeter fan in the bottom. Included fans, you've got two in the front and one in the rear, which is, which is a very nice touch that you've got two fans in the front with this. Dust filters in the top, front, and bottom, We've got USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabit USB Type-C at the front, as well as two USB 5 gigabit 3.0 ports, or USB 3.2 Gen 1. We've got audio in and out, a power button, and a reset button. You've got two 3.5 inch bays, you can also use those with 2.5 inch drives, and then you've also got four dedicated 2.5 inch tray positions with two trays included. So if you want to use all four, you'll have to order a couple extra trays. Not a big deal. Now full disclosure, I love the original Meshify, Meshify C. My one complaint is that if you use big graphics cards, they don't really fit. They've addressed that with this. Well, you know what? It would it would actually be easier for me to just show you. So, just just one second. All right. So here is our first Meshify C. Look, it's not quite as tall, but depth-wise, you know, it's a little misleading. If you just look at the dimensions on the on the box, it's like, look, this case is only slightly more deep, but Look at the front, they've reorganized the front. Cause this is, you know, this is an 8700K, this is an older system. There's not a lot going on here. You don't really have a lot of room between the, the front here and the radiator. But over here, you got so much more room for activities. Yeah, I'll bring your machine back in a minute. Let's get something a little higher in and take a look at it. Yeah, look, it's another Meshify C. I wasn't kidding when I said I liked them. These came from Micro Center. They didn't even send these to me. They're just machines I've got around here at the office for doing various things. All right, you see this? It's got the colorful 3060 Ti with that fancy LCD screen and the Be Quiet Pure Loop 360. There's no room. It's literally the card rubbing into the radiator. I've had to mount my fans on the front. This is not great because the mesh filter's missing. In this case, it's not a problem. We're gonna transplant our 5950X from this case, the old Meshify C into the Meshify 2. Now you might also be thinking, wait, this still looks familiar because there's the Define 2 Compact. Yeah, it's pretty similar. The difference is you just get the one mesh top because Meshify, you've got both the solid and non-solid top with the other case. But this case also costs a little bit less. It's a little bit trimmed down on features, but the chassis, the internals, pretty similar. This case is also available in a couple of different versions. I've got the dark tempered glass version here. The front fan, this is what I'm talking about, two fans in the front. That was always the best way to run the Meshify C with two fans in the front. That 8700K that I had with just the one fan in the front, that was always something that bugged me a little bit. Well now, we've got our fans in the front, it's gonna work a lot better. Also check this out. Yeah, so the, the front was always removable, it's just that a lot of people would actually pull off the whole front. Well, now the front is built in. That's metal. It's not going anywhere. You can't make the mistake of accidentally pulling the whole front off. And look how breathable this is. That's uh, not exactly fancy testing, but I don't really care, so it's fine. Oh, look, they relocated the indicator LED to the front and it's horizontal. In terms of board support, well, you've got support for ATX, ITX, Micro ATX, and that's about it. This is my new favorite trick for these Meshify, or for the new generation of fractal cases. That is so much easier to work on. Yes, I know tubes down, but, because I'm gonna be swapping GPUs in and out of the system a lot, I'm not doing tubes down. 
this case might be a good candidate for a case mod that turns it into like the old school desktop style PC cases, you know, where it would lay, lay flat like this, how it was in the 80s. I think if I didn't already have the parts on hand, I would probably go for a front 240 millimeter cooler because it'll go more naturally with the fans. You could end up with a push-pull configuration or do what I'm gonna do, which is move the fans to the top. Got my accessories box, which is in the three and a half inch bay on the inside. Now I've been reasonably satisfied with the performance of the, uh, the Pure Loop 360 here from Be Quiet. I like that it comes with extra fluid and some of the other accoutrement that comes with it. But that said, you know, Fractal has AIOs as well. G-Skill just came out with the new AIO. We had a separate build video with that. There's a lot of AIOs out there. There's a lot of reviews on AIOs out there. You should choose carefully. I've been pretty happy with the, the Pure Loop, but you know, time will tell. It's like those old Intermax AIOs that uh, were fine for about a year and then they weren't. And they continue to not be that great, at least the last, you know, it's like, I want them to be awesome, but the, these slot covers look familiar. All right, moment of truth. We've got a radiator in with the fans in the correct position. Will our Rob Dignagian iGame360 fit. Yeah, look at that. With the fans, it's got about as much clearance as it did before, which is pretty much perfect. Now this is really exciting because I've got an extra like two millimeters of clearance here at the edge, maybe three, probably more like one or two, but that's just enough room that I could 3D print a little bracket here to mount in my 120 millimeter screw holes that are in this radiator and actually secure my GPU here. So if I were using this machine, you know, like taking it to a LAN party or something like that, I could do that. Check out the cable management here at the back. Lots of pre-installed Velcro straps, lots of Velcro straps over on this side. When I put in the power supply and do all of my other cable routing, I'm gonna have a lot of options in terms of how I route my cables and options for keeping it clean. Reasonably okay cabling. Hey, I got the power button right. I also cheated a little bit because there's no dedicated hard drive LED for this case. And because the case has a lot of RGB or I've got RGB peripherals in here, I'm gonna know if it's on or not. So even though it's labeled power LED, I've hooked it up to the hard drive LED header. So I'll have a blinking light on the front where the power LED normally is, but to indicate hard drive activity. I like that better. That's just, that's a me choice. That's a me thing. And once again, we can hear our graphics card taking off. All right, so the question on my mind for this build was, is this build good enough for Threadripper? Or is this case good enough for Threadripper? And I think if you were going for the 24 core, certainly with a tower cooler. If you were going for Threadripper with a custom loop or anything beyond a tower cooler, I don't think this case is large enough. But I do think based on my experience here building the 5950X and our, you know, be quiet 360 millimeter loop here, that this case would also be suitable for Threadripper if you have a suitably small motherboard. Now some of the fancier higher end Threadripper motherboards, they're bigger. They require bigger standoffs. Either XL ATX, extra long, which is not gonna work in this case, or, you know, the extended ATX, which your mileage may vary depending on how extended that motherboard is because you do have a little bit of room to play with at the front edge of the motherboard, but really honestly, not a lot. I was more concerned about cooling capacity for this case and is it good enough for Threadripper and is it good enough for Threadripper at a reasonable volume? A reasonable volume? That's from Office Space. But yeah, yeah, I think that it's fine in terms of noise production and uh, heat dissipation for this one particular build. I mean, this is not empirical testing or anything like that. It's just subjective anecdotal experience. But having experienced a lot of builds for a lot of friends and people in the forum with the uh, uh, Fractal, the older Meshify S2, Fractal really has put a lot of lessons learned in this case. And you know, like I said, even though physically it's almost, but not quite the same size as the old Meshify, it's just a hair bigger. You've got so much more room on the inside because they completely reworked the way the front is. So these are all good choices on Fractal's part. In fact, I'm hard pressed to really find any major flaws with this case at all. seems like Fractal's done their homework and they've done a good job with it. So kudos Fractal. I'm Wendell, this is level one. I'm signing out and I'll see you later. Hey, if you do a build with this, come post pictures in the forum. All right, I'll see you there.
It's the old Meshify. <laughs> Are you talking bad about me? Yes. But I'm so cheap. Yes. Yes, that's true. <laughs>